Hey everyone, SudaTech here, welcome back to the channel. Today we are compiling 15 more packages from chapter 6, and there's really not much to say, so I think we should get right into it. The first package of the day is the XML parser. Keep in mind that this is a capital X. I had some issues with that just so that you can find the package. Go ahead and unpack it, change to directory. Then we're going to prepare it for compilation with a smaller compilation script than usual, just perl makefile.pl, then make it, make test it, and make install it. Intel tool is also fairly simple to install, just unpack it, change the directory, and then we're going to fix a warning that's caused by Perl 5.22 and later. So prepare for compilation, make, make check, and make install it. There's a secondary script that you have to run after the make install just to finish the installation process. Autoconf uses a very standard installation process, so just go through the commands in the book to get through that one, and then we're going to move on to auto make. This is a little bit more complicated, so go ahead and unpack it, change the directory. We're going to fix another warning that's caused by Perl, then prepare it for compilation, make it. And then there's a couple of tests that don't work correctly, so we're going to run a command to fix that. Then you can run make check with dash j4, even if you're on a single threaded CPU, this is still going to increase it just because of the way it runs the tests. Finally, finish it off with make install. We're going to install xz, so unpack it, change the directory, fix another internal problem, then prepare for compilation. We're going to run make, make check, and make install. At the end, you're going to want to move around some libraries, so you can find the commands in the book to do that, and then make sure you recreate the symbolic link so that everything works correctly. Unpack kmod, change the directory, prepare for compilation, make it, and then make install it with a little bit of a for script at the end to install it fully with the correct symbolic links for compatibility. GitText and procps all have fairly simple installation processes, so I think you should be fine doing this on your own. Just remember to change the permissions of a certain folder at the end of GitText, and that you're moving some libraries around at the very end of procps. After unpacking, changing the directory, and fixing a script for e2fs progs, you're going to create a new build directory, then change that, then prepare for compilation. We're going to compile it, then run the test suite. When you're running the test suite, keep in mind that if you don't have much more than 256 megabytes of RAM, you could run into issues if you don't have enough swap space either. So make sure you either have a swap partition or more than that memory, which you probably do to run the test suite. Finally, you can run a couple of make install commands, then move some packages around so that it works correctly. We're also going to have to unzip a certain package so that it can be accessed. CoreUtils requires a patch, so go ahead and apply that, then prepare for compilation. There's a couple of tests that we're going to have to run with different configurations. Certain tests require them to be run as root, and certain tests require them to be run as the nobody user. So we're going to run a couple of different tests with different commands to make sure it all works out correctly. When you're done with the test, you can remove the temporary group that was created and install the package. At the very end, there's also some folders that we have to move around to the correct location. Diffutils, Gawk, and FindUtils all have fairly simple installation processes, so I'm just going to leave this one up to you. You just have to copy and paste the commands in the book, and you should be good to go. Graph gets a little bit more complicated, but it's still fairly simple. Go ahead and unpack it, change the directory, and then we're going to set the default paper size. If you're in the US, you can set this to letter. Elsewhere, it might be better if you set it to A4. This is up to you, and you can change it on a case-by-case -case basis, but Graph does require a default setting. When you're done setting that, you can run make and make install. That just about brings us to the last package, Grub, which is another fairly simple one to install. Go ahead and unpack it, change the directory, prepare for compilation, make it, and make install it. We're going to be doing a lot more with Grub later on when we configure the bootloader, but this is really all we have to do for now. So that's about it. In the next video, we're going to finally be finishing up all the packages, and in the video after that, we're going to be finishing the entire system, and we're going to have it booted up and all ready to go. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.